I might want to come check out the networking lounge. So regardless where you can actually see, there's individuals in here viewing um, the content on demand right now. So regardless of where I click into the event, this top navigational toolbar never really leaves my site. You can rename it. It doesn't have to say lobby, theaters, exhibits, sponsors, and so on. Um, we'll tailor it to your use case, but it's, it, it's there and, and acts almost as a nice consistent standpoint for your attendees to leverage if they get click happy and get lost as to where they should go. In addition, we have in event pop-up announcements and some agenda items that will notify the attendees if this was live, when a session's taking place, when they should go to the scheduled group chat to talk to the executive director, when they should explore the exhibit hall for the, you know, the expo hours. So um, from a navigational standpoint, that's something we really work hard at in defining. And some of the main items I wanted to share with you, again, back to the navigation, is APA did a nice job of creating what they call five steps to success. Here are the five things that you should do to get the most out of your experience. So if I wanted to visit the Congress Hall and Expo, so another core component for a lot of you is how do we take the revenue that we were getting from our corporate partners and supporters on site and put that into a virtual event? We've been doing this for years. So we have different packages that you can build on and create that make it worthwhile for your partners. And again, we're tracking everything that the end users are doing, how long they stay, what they watch, what they ask, what they download. So there's value for, for the sponsors at the end of the day afterwards. Um, and just to give you an idea of what APA did is they created a number of different exhibit halls. If I was interested in coming in and learning a little bit more about Blue Marble, I could click on the Blue Marble booth. I could watch a short video about that company. I could chat in real time with Blue Marble representatives. And I could even download any documents um, or fill out any lead forms if I was interested in getting a demo and follow-up information from, from Blue Marble. Um, so this would be a virtual booth within the APA event that Blue Marble bought a package from APA to have this brand awareness and, and component um, and be represented as part of the, the multi-day virtual experience. In addition to the sponsors in the exhibit hall, a big component is going to be around the webcast and the, the presentations that are delivered. So. As you see here, they had a number of general sessions. If I were to click on this one and open up the presentation, I'm just gonna resume this and I'll pause it. A value add that we have is um, at Entrato, we own our own presentation tool as well as the virtual conference platform. So you're working with one provider to build out the lobby and the exhibits and the lounge. But for all of your keynotes and breakout sessions, you can leverage our webcasting technology, which we call Studio. So there's a couple different ways that this can be designed and the format of it can vary. Um, as you see this, this is more focused on video with the chat and um, the ability to see comments that are coming, coming in. Um, from the attendee side, I can personalize my view. So if I don't want to uh, see what's taking place in the chat, I can just focus on the video. You can see what APA did. Daily Pay was one of their sponsors. So there's branding recognition as part of this keynote um, that they paid for to be a part of that. Um, and there's a number of other interactive components that you can include from chat to polling to moderated Q&A to testing. We have a whole certification program that you can award someone for their participation and deliver them a certificate if you'd like, or at least collect the data that you need to then go to your system and validate that Jeff Heisler watched these series of presentations and should earn uh, credits. Um, and you can have handouts and surveys tied to each presentation. So there's a number of different ways that you can include the interactive components. And then from a delivery standpoint, 
You can use video only. You can have video and slides. I'll pull up um, one of their workshops just so you can see a different look and feel. So this, they um, had an, it was an audio only. So they had the speaker headshot here. If I fast forward, you can see their um, slide sync with the audio. I have a live group chat, a moderated Q&A, and then they added some webinar tips. So each presentation can have its own look and feel. Again, these were more educational focused, so they leverage this format template for most of their heavy educational content. But again, I think there's value, the value that we provide is uh, there's, you can run concurrent sessions at once. It's all our own technology. So you're working with one provider on all the moving um, pieces and from audio and slides to video and slides to, I call it the Brady Bunch look and feel. If you have four or five speakers at once, that's something that we can support. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can deliver it, which match those trends I highlighted earlier and how you make it more conversational. That's really how we built this tool um, to make, you know, have it focus on good quality from an audio and video side, but also those interactive pieces to keep your audience engaged. Two other things I wanted to highlight in this example, and then uh, Reggie, I'll open it up for any questions or just review the questions that come in, is they had specific scheduled group chats. So a lot of the APA members and non-members that purchased access to this really wanted to get in front and have some time with different executives as part of the event. So they had a Dan Maddox meet and greet where I could come in and at a specific time chat with Dan in real time to ask him specific questions, see how he's doing, network, get his thoughts on any hot topics. And you can see they flag these at specific times on, on um, June 2nd and June 3rd. And then in addition to the group chat, they um, provided uh, a survey which tied back to the last piece that I wanted to highlight today, which is around the gamification and badging and games that we can include. Um, so this more focuses on that real-time interaction. And I think, look, we have to be honest with ourselves, can't repurpose a cocktail hour inside of our platform, but there's a lot of components that we provide where you can create and drive that user journey and experience so that people can interact in real time. That's ultimately what we can provide is a large scale audience in real time, um, watching content, chatting, interacting with your exhibitors and sponsors um, to the best and you know the best of our ability. So in addition to those communication touch points, we do have some games and some fun that you can turn on and make part of the experience. So they had a little payroll trivia game that they um, that they added, but they also leveraged our badge program. So the way the badge program works is you as the event host determine what is it the most important things for your audience to do. It could be watch session, complete your profile, go visit the expo hall. Based on those different actions, we're in, a, in advance of the event going live, we're setting up rules that are tied to those interactions and badges. Once an attendee goes in and does one of those things, they are in a badge, each badge is a point value, and all of a sudden we're creating a little healthy competition where attendees can have some competitive fun, and there's a live leaderboard and I can challenge and you know compete against my peers. And what it does is it, naturally the attendees understand that the more and more they consume, the better chance they have to earn badges and points. APA said, hey, if you reach this threshold, we're gonna have some great prizes to give away um, via raffle. So they had an opportunity to win some free stuff. Um, and for you, it's generating more data. And, and at the end of the day, it's helping reinforce the education of the event, which is the most important component of any of these use cases that we're we're helping support. So there's a lot, I could spend hours going through all the different components of this experience. I hope this was a helpful starting point so you can see how one association 
um, recently pivoted. They had success in terms of their audience. They had over 1,500 people register. Um, I think the conversion rates were over 75%. They had a number of sponsorships that um, they sold and helped them drive some revenue to offset the cost um, and repurpose what those corporate partners got on site. And ultimately, it wasn't webinar after webinar after webinar after webinar, which I think we all would agree kind of turns into a little bit of binge watching television. They created these other areas that allowed attendees to have a break, but also engage in different ways with exhibitors, networking lounge in the chat, and having some fun with the, with the um, badges and games. So. I will, I'm going to stop for a minute and see if there's. So there's a, there's a few questions in here. I'll read a couple of them off to you, Jeff, if that's okay. And you can answer them. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Um, Thanks, Reggie. Yeah. One of the things I know people were interested in is what happens when somebody visit, visits an exhibitor booth? Does the exhibitor automatically get the names of the people who visit? What's that experience like from the exhibitor's point of view? Yeah, no, it's a great question. From the exhibitor standpoint, um, they're uh, in real time able to see who's visiting their booth. We actually have a special access uh, for exhibitors so that they can chat amongst themselves. So for example, the if I come back, back to uh, Blue Marble. So Blue Marble had a few um, staff members that were part of this individual booth. Um, they might on the live day have 500 people come visit their booth. So they have their own private chat that the attendees don't see to help um, talk amongst themselves in real time saying, hey, Jeff Heisler's at the booth. Who's going to approach and see if he has any questions inside the group chat? So it allows them to navigate the system a little bit and make sure they're not doubling up on all the attendees coming. And they get all the data that they are allowed to get, if that makes sense. So GDPR and the data privacy, we've been put through the absolute ringer and understand how important that is. And once they ex register and accept privacy policy in terms of use, they know that their information, some information is gonna be um, possibly exposed to exhibitors and sponsors that are part of the event. So in this case, Blue Marble would know Jeff Heisler was at the booth for a certain amount of time. I asked these questions, I downloaded these documents, and the, um, they have their own uh, exhibitor data portal to access all that information um, in real time and after the event. And one other question that sometimes comes up is the build out of this booth, is it easy? And it usually takes about 30 minutes to an hour. It's a very intuitive wizard driven tool. We provide training and help answer questions. Um, but exhibitors come in and build out their own booths, add up, add their own content and documentation, can ask us for questions that come up. But again, all the data um, based on what you guys decide to set as, you know, here's what you'll be allowed to see as the event host. Um, they'll have access to that in real time through their own data portal. Got it. Got it. Uh, another thing that a lot of associations do is poster sessions. And so there were some questions as to whether or not you guys do and how do you handle poster sessions? So it's a great question. We actually just ran an event last week with a scientific organization um, that had several thousands of posters um, as part of the overall and, and abstracts as part of the overall experience. So what we did instead of duplicating efforts is the attendees would log in. We linked out to Cadmian, um, I think I'm pronouncing that correct, which where all the posters and abstracts were hosted. So, they, so our technology was kind of the launch pad to get to that tool. And then they created what they call labs in more of a networking lounge type space that allowed attendees to, after they went to go view the posters, if, um, they wanted to come back. There were set times as part of the agenda where they could engage in real um, time discussions uh, with their peers in terms of what they were reviewing and, and, um, and uh, consuming on, on the third party tool where the posters were already 
hosted. So if there's a lot, that's what we'd recommend is, okay, are they already being hosted somewhere else? Can we use us as a launch pad and create this collaborate, collaboration interactive area inside, inside the event? If there's a few, you can leverage a booth style template where an attendee or a poster um, lead can come in and upload a short video, have their PDF of their um, of their poster and their research available, and then answer time answer questions in real time. It just if you have thousands of it, it's hard to create that many booths from an, an attendee side to be able to navigate it. So we um, look to leverage something where it's already being hosted if that's if that's the case. So I hope that helps, but that's what we just did for uh, a recent scientific oriented event. So one one other one last question for you, uh, Jeff is what does that look what does the exhibit management look like from the exhibitor's point of view? Do you provide guidance with them on how to set up their booths? How do they go about setting up their booths and choosing options and what kind of consulting do you provide around that? Yeah, so it's a great question. With the exhibitor, as well as everything that you're seeing here, it's a full service approach. So you have a project team, a PM lead, and, and a webcast lead, and shared support resources behind those two leads to kick it off, bring it to life, because there's a number of different workflows, execute it, and then have a post event debrief. So for the exhibitors, that's part of the implementation plan where we come in, we set up, uh, or we we don't come in. We set up one or two WebEx training sessions to provide an overview of how an exhibitor can build out their booth. We provide them with access and exactly what they need to do to go out and build it out. Um, and then uh, we'll field any questions that come up while they're uh, configuring their own booth. So it, it's a process that um, has worked for a number of of years and we're really doing our best to hold the hands of exhibitors which i think is important for you because they need they need us to take care of them because they're paying for this opportunity in most cases but also if you guys had to deal with each and every single one with no support or help it'd be really really challenging so that's part of our full service delivery where we'll help provide that guidance and, and make suggestions on the templates to select and the type of content to use within the booth. So, so that wasn't the last question. I got one more last question, <laughs> and that okay. is: No worries. Do you guys support uh, both live and, and on demand? So, for example, would your organization come to the live events to do the webcast and the live sessions? Do you do that, or do you just do the the virtual? Yeah, so we do both. Um, actually, before COVID um, hit. A, big use case for us was hybrid, a hybrid event. So we'd send a crew on site um, with cameras and code specific sessions, live stream it right into our platform. That's our sweet spot. Um, and then as I mentioned, after it runs live, it can flip to on demand instantaneously. There's no delay. Um, so that is something that we're still offering and providing obviously with COVID, there's limitations, but for events later this year in 2021. I know that's part of the strategy of several events where we're actually coming on site. Um, and then in the case where we had to pivot and go virtual only, the, um, the uh, format has been more for pre-recording um, your webcast going live or making those available right away on demand. So there's those three formats we support um, across the board, whether it's a 100% virtual or a hybrid experience where we're live streaming um, from a physical event. We do, we can provide services for both. Good, thank you so much, Jeff. Jeff, if you will, uh, the chat area will still be open there. If you've got five or 10 minutes to answer some of the questions that were flowing through chat, that would be great. Um, folks, we're gonna take another 15 minute break, so I will, See you at 2.30. Thanks, Jeff. Will do. Thanks, Reggie.
Mark, how you doing, man? Can't hear you, so I think your your sound is off. Maybe I need to unmute you. Hold on one second. I'm good. Second. Here we go. There we go. Lori, you there? Lori, how you doing? Hey there. How are you? Good. Good to see you guys. Let me turn this video on real quick. Uh, good to see you guys, and and thanks for making the time to do this. Really appreciate it. Well, we appreciate it. Yeah, I don't know if you guys were on earlier when we did the polling, but there certainly is a lot of need and a lot of need right now. You know, most of the people attending um, were, were looking to do something within the next, you know, between now and the end of the year. So um, a lot of need out there. So I appreciate you being here for doing this. Well, one um, thing that excites me is that I love how I get a, an objection all the time that that our users are older and maybe can't handle the technology. And after seeing the last two platforms, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not so worried about it. <laughs> oh, man. So I'll remind you guys that people can hear us, but they, can, they can't necessarily. Uh, so just to make sure you're aware of that. But I, I'm, I'm always amazed at that as well. And, you know, I think we got to give people a chance. I am, you know, I, people have told me for years that CEOs wouldn't use social media and wouldn't use discussion groups. And then I collaborate discussion groups month after month, year after year, the CEO groups are in the one, the top one to five every year. And so I, I think, you know, it, when there's, when there's value there, people figure out how to do what they need to do. Yep. I agree. Really well, this has been very exciting and I think beneficial for all of us uh, because I think we've all gotten some thought leadership out of every single one of the presentations as well. I certainly, I certainly have learned a lot. That's for sure. Um, so we don't, we don't start until 2.30, so if you guys need to get, take a few minutes and get some water or something, feel free. Uh, just turn your, turn your audio off and video off so we don't have to hear you drinking that water. But uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys at 2.30, okay? I just wanted to make sure that the sound and things were working. Hey, Rick, is it okay if I go ahead and share my screen just so I can make sure that's coming through okay? Absolutely. Let's do that. Okay, great. Coming through loud and clear on this end. Okay, so you should be able to see my presentation view there. I do. Excellent. Thanks I for do. the confirmation. We'll just leave that up there. <laughs> sounds yes, sounds good. <laughs> leave that up there. See you guys in a little bit. See you in a few.
<laughs> I guess we ought to behave a little bit, huh? <laughs> oh goodness. Lori, I'm sorry. Mark Mark always brings out the worst in me. <laughs> oh, I've been working with Mark for a while now. So <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, just think of me as a carbon before it becomes a diamond. That's all. <laughs> oh, man. Certainly keep it fun, Mark. That's for sure. That's I got to tell you, it's exciting to see all these people here, especially names I know, and several have reached out to me by email or, or other systems. So even here in the chat, so it's, it's great. Uh, <laughs> oh, absolutely yeah we've got a few uh reaching out thank you jason thank you barbara i appreciate it i wish i could turn everybody's uh um microphones on so they can give themselves a round of applause. We've had probably close to 1500 people throughout the course of the day, which is which is pretty remarkable. And, and on average is about between 450 and 500 people per demo, which is just fabulous. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that people are looking at all of these things and seeing what their options are. Um, because quite honestly, they might end up using one, two, or three of the, the vendors, depending on what they're trying to get done. So. <laughs> Barbara says, no, oh, no, you don't. She says, I really don't want it. <laughs> all those microphones on. <laughs> all right, folks, we'll start up in about two minutes. You know, as you were saying, though, Reggie, for example, earlier today, Open Water, which has got a great platform and whatnot, we integrate with them, and they had mentioned that our Event Central product integrates with them. So. There are tremendous opportunities in standalone programs and collaborations to, to really meet the needs of each particular organization and what they're Absolutely. trying to accomplish. Absolutely. You know, and, and it's one of the one of the presenters said it earlier. Um, you know, our attendees right now are, are flexible. This is a great time to be experimenting. It really is. People understand the limitations we all have right now and um, they just want to get their hands on the stuff, the content that they need to do their jobs better every day. So um, we can we can be flexible. We can be a little more flexible than normal. So, and I'm I'm a, I'm, I'm happy to see, as you said, Mark, um, the collaborations between industry partners right now to help associations solve these problems. Pretty cool to see. Pretty cool to see. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick kick this off and then turn it over to, to you, Lori. Um, folks, I, I just want to thank you guys for hanging in there today. I, as we've said many times during the course of this uh, this session here, you may or may not find yourself using one or more of these industry partners um, as as you go about solving your specific um, problems around being virtual. Um, I, I'm, I'm pleased, as, as I said earlier, that I'm seeing industry partners partner with each other to provide the best experience they can for an association's attendees. Um, so thanks for sticking in there. Um, we've had over probably close to 1,500 people throughout the course of the day. Um, the, the sessions themselves are averaging between four and 500 people, which is just, just fabulous. Um, do stick around. Um, for the end, end of the day, and we're going to do a wrap up and I need a couple of folks to join me on the wrap up. So anybody who's feeling particularly um, uh, um, excited about doing that, send me an email at Reggie at ASAECenter.org and we'll get you up on screen to have a little discussion and we'll do a drawing as well. So with that, I will kick this over to you, Lori. Have at it. Great. Thank you, Reggie. And thanks to ASAE for having us here today and facilitating this, this great event. And thanks for everybody for your interest in the RD Mobile Results Direct event platform.
My name is Lori Ely. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer at Results Direct, and I'm joined by my colleague today, Mark Wallach, who's the Manager of Mobile Business Development for RD Mobile Division. So for those of you that may not be familiar with Results Direct, we have been serving the association industry for 25 years now, helping associations create engaging digital experiences. And for the last 10 years, our RD Mobile division has been providing event technology and mobile apps designed to meet the unique needs of associations. So you're gonna find things in our platform like posters, nested sessions. Mark was talking a little bit before in, in, uh, during the chat about um, some of our seamless integrations with AMS products. Again, all designed to meet the needs of associations, meetings, and, and conferences. So we've grown to serve hundreds of organizations across 20 countries, and our platform has been used on well over 2,000 events. And as you can see from the sampling of some of our client logos on screen, we have a wide range of associations, large national and international associations to state and regional associations. So we really have solutions and price points designed to meet all needs. So something that sets us apart from some of our, the other organizations is our focus on customer success. Now, the way that we bring that to our clients is first and foremost with our client success team. 